Oh, we're back. Um, hey, Lab Rats. Uh, so I wanted to, um, I posted a thing. You know what? I think this is going to show up sideways again. My camera's been doing a little funny thing. So um, if it's, hopefully now it's right upside down. Right side up, not upside down. Um, but I posted a thing yesterday. I went out to the email list. I know that for sure. So if you're on the insiders list, um, you got it. And... Maybe that's it. But we were, ta we're talking about um, stamina training during the in-season and how during the off-season, like we will do shuttle runs, change of direction, uh, vertical agility, things that not like smashing into your butterfly and causing a bunch of wear and tear on your hips, but things that sort of are very multi-directional, um, both north, south, east, west, but also up, down. Because we need to build that stamina the way that you need it on the ice. And a lot of you aren't on the ice as much during the off season as you are, and some of you not at all as you are during the season. So a common mistake is people actually stop stamina training altogether, or they keep trying to do the same kind of stamina training they did in the off season, which is gonna add a lot of wear and tear to your hips, which already are taking, <laughs> taking, uh, taking the brunt of it on the ice. So we don't need to do that. It, it's a time when we wanna, um, yes, build our stamina, especially if we're not on the ice that much. If you're on the ice like five times a week and you're playing games and you're practicing hard, don't worry about stamina at all. If you are, um, you know, but some of you like, hey, my team has one practice a week and we play one game and that's it, you know, that's not going to be enough training to keep you, keep you fit for the season. So you need to do extra stamina training, probably two to three, probably two stamina sessions if you're on the ice two times. So those though, we want them to still be high intensity. Um, and I don't mean high intensity, like going for a five mile run or a steady, like long duration. It's going to be short duration, repeated bursts. Um, and then you're going to do something that isn't too much wear and tear on your body. So if you're a runner, like a, like a natural runner, you can do it running. Some of you just are not made to run. That's why you're hockey players because you sucked at any running sport, but skating, you're pretty good. Uh, so, you know, but like that could be, I don't mind the elliptical actually because it's no impact and it actually gets you into a little bit of hip extension. So a lot of us spend time sitting in school or work and then we get on the ice and we're in our ready position, our hip, we go home, we sit on the sofa, our hips are always chronically flexed. Even like when I sleep, I pull my knees up to sleep. So, you know, probably 12 hours at least a day, my hips are in a flex position and your body doesn't know like, oh, that's not good to have my hips, my hip muscles shortened in the front. It just knows we don't actually need all this length because we hardly ever use it. So um, elliptical, that's nice because it's sort of a functional rhythmic exercise, but it gets you into some hip extension. Um, I don't mind Stairmaster. I actually don't even mind the bicycle. Although the problem with the bicycle is it gets you in that hip flex position again. So I don't love it. If you did it like once a week during the off season or during the in season, we try not to use it at all in the off season unless there's an injury or there's something specific we're trying to work on. But yeah, like once a week in the in season, yeah, I don't mind and then do something else, but trying to do something to get your hips and do a little bit of extension. It, over in the Shutout Academy, some people even just do like, like, like stair step, you know, in their house. So, um, you know, again, we want to try to make it so that it's less wear and tear on your joints, um, if possible. Then the other thing, um, somebody asked about speed training and they said, well, you know, if I'm doing stamina twice a week and then I have to do speed and then do my lift, like <laughs> this, this is going to be, I just don't have time to do it. And it's totally true. What we do over in the shutout Academy is we work our speed. We integrate it into our full body strength so that again, the, the in season training is made just to keep you sharp. It's and, and you know, some people are like, I hate the word maintenance. We don't do anything for maintenance. We're always trying to get better. Yes. We're always trying to get better, but not at the, not at the cost of, um, taking away from your performance on the ice. So, you know, if we really wanted to make you stronger in the in season, we'd have you in the gym three or four days a week doing, you know, heavy lifting, like off season type volume. Um, we don't want to do that in season. So we cut the volume way back and we just work on building, like keeping that max strength, 
working on that rate of force production, which is power. So we integrate some of our speed and agility into those um, uh, sort of compound sets or supersets that we use over in the Shutout Academy. And that, so that's how we tie it all in, and we still keep the workouts pretty short. They only take you know, maybe around 40 minutes to get through. So um, that's how you're going to do that so that, yeah, you, you shouldn't be heading to the gym five days a week during your season, like unless, yeah, you don't practice or play games. Also, if you're on a team where you end up, where you're just not really playing in that many games yet, uh, then make sure you're keeping up with your stamina outside. And it sucks because I know you got to go to the games and you got to sit on the bench and you have to be there, but you need to make up for it because then what's going to happen is if you're not, if you're like, oh yeah, well, we had a practice in a game, I'm, you know, I'm good or whatever. Um, when your opportunity comes, you're going to run out of gas and you're not going to play your best. And, um, you know, and then you might lose that opportunity and then you'll be awfully sour because you'll think, why didn't I just do my stamina training? <laughs> and then so that I could really shine when I got my chance. So that's all I had for you today. I just want to pop on, talk a little bit about how, how we do stamina and how we do speed training because your, your in-season training should be very different from your off-season training. So if you're doing trying to do the same things you did in the off-season or if you're not training at all, that's another like, ooh, ooh, whoopsie. <laughs> we want to fix that. See you, Lab Rats. Cheers.